anyway, uh, when I first got involved in fitness, like it was very taboo to post pictures of yourself in your underwear on the internet. So I always posted my pictures at uh, bodybuilding.com because at the time that's, that's what we had. I would post them on Facebook, but people wouldn't understand. I would get unfriended a lot by usually my guy friends because I guess their girlfriends would see me in their feed and would be like, all hail to the Nizah and uh, have to unfriend me. So, I, I mean, I guess I don't blame them, but whatever. Yeah, whatever. So anyway, I wanted to make a video today because I have gotten the question asked, uh, should you hire a coach? When should you hire a coach? How do you know how to pick a coach? Things of that nature. Now, I will be honest with you. I do not have a lot of experience with coaches because uh, as many of you know, and for those of you who do not know, I have coached myself from the beginning. This all started out for me as a learning process and it wasn't something that I was like, why would I pay money to for information I can find online? And when I did pay money to find out the information, it was for me to further my education, to go to school. I got a bachelor, bachelor's degree in sports and health and my concentration was exercise science. But I will tell you that what I went to school for does not have any real merit in physique coaching. So for me, it's been a learning process. I spent countless hours on the bodybuilding.com forums yeah, as what I just mentioned, um, learning from some of the biggest names in the industry. I'm not even joking. Like these people were, nobody really knew who they were because bodybuilding was not as big as it is now, but the, I'm talking big names, Lane Norton, Alberto Nunez, Eric Helms, Alan Aragon, Brad Schoenfeld, um, dang, uh, Matt Ogus, I'm trying to think of people that you, you all would know. Anyway, big names like that on bodybuilding.com and they would just share information for free. Used to be you could email Lane Norton and be like, hey, you know, this, this, have questions and he would answer them, wouldn't charge you a dime. And obviously those folks are very busy now and they've made a really great they've made a name for themselves in the fitness community. So they're not as accessible as they used to be, but that those are the types of people that I learned from. And I feel very fortunate that I did find the bodybuilding.com forums because it did have that quality of people on it. And so that is where I learned like all of my physique knowledge. Cause you don't learn that in school when you go to school for exercise. So, yeah, I've gotten myself to where I am now, and I want, I posted a picture yesterday on both my personal Insta, or, well, I did post it on Instagram. I posted it on Instagram and my personal Facebook and then my Facebook page of my, just my progress over the last almost two years with gaining muscle. What I didn't mention in that post is that the pictures that I posted here, I'll go ahead and I'll throw it up here so you can see. Yeah, so that is the picture that I posted. The picture that, if you're looking at the screen, the picture that is on your left was my physique, the beginning of January, 2018, before I entered my prep for 2018. So that's what I was working with. And then I prepped for 33 weeks and got to this physique. So I came out of that prep and I had all intentions of doing a recovery diet instead of a reverse diet because I was very uncomfortable. I did not like the level of leanness that I was at. It was painful. I was tired and I was over it. 
I cannot express how over it I was at that particular point in time. But y'all get back to that in a minute. So came out of that prep. I wanted to put weight back on as quickly as possible. I was trying to just stop myself at 20 pounds. Yeah, here I am a good 35, 40 pounds up. But I was trying to, my goal was to stop at around 20 pounds up from stage and get my menstrual cycle back because that is something that I lost during my prep. So I wanted to get myself back into a place hormonally where I could just pack on as much muscle as possible. And I was really excited to do it because I've never done a true to God bulk before. Because what girl ever says, and I don't want to say that as a general blanket term, most females are never going to say, I want to gain weight, I want to get bigger. Unless you're in this space. Well, so that was a new concept for me and I was like, I had just won my pro card. I was looking at the pro females already in the organization and I was like, holy shit, have I, I got some work to do, honey. So I went straight to work immediately after my show and I feel like I've done a great job. Like if you look at those pictures, there's such a huge difference. And I posted them on the internet thinking, not because I think that I look good now, because honestly, I, I, I love my shape, but I don't, I wish that I was leaner, but that will come. And it's, you can't let that dictate how you feel about yourself because you're so much more than how much fat you have on your body. Come on now. You know, you can't really let that can't beat yourself up over it. I did for a little while in the beginning. But then, you know, you're just like, oh, whatever. This is me, and this is what I look like, and I'm working towards something. I know what my end goal is, and it doesn't really matter if anybody else knows what it is, approves of what it is. I don't care what your opinion of it is. I know there's people out there that maybe know me personally, only know me on the internet. Maybe they don't... You know those people that, like hate watching. I don't really feel like anybody hates me. Maybe they do, but I don't, but hope not. Um, I don't feel like anybody's really hate watching me. You just, you know, there's that saying where they say people want you to do good, but never better than them. So I'm sure there are people that, that look at me and talk about me to each other or kind of snicker, like, <laughs> you know, cause I, whatever, do it. So I don't post those pictures because I'm proud of it. I post those pictures because, well, I am proud. I'm very proud of my shape. I've changed my shape and I, I take for granted that not everybody knows what they're looking at. Like my sister, love her to death. Me and my sister, we are so close. I love her, I love you, Sarah, if you're watching. She's, she's real bad at YouTube, but she promised me she was gonna try to watch eventually one day. So maybe one day she'll see this. But I sent her the pictures, I was like, girl, Sorry, I have a hair. I was like, girl, check this out. And she was like, wow, you know, da, da, da. And I started pointing out to her. I was like, look at my shoulders. Look at this. Look at that. She was like, oh, man. She's like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. I didn't. She's like, I could tell there was a difference, but I couldn't really understand what the differences were. So if you're one of those people and you're not used to looking at a physique, it's and you see a difference but you're not sure what it is, it's fine. Maybe you don't aren't able to see a difference at all. That myself because I am proud of the work that I've put in and I want that there for when I do lean out to be like, okay, well this is where I took my body to get this result. Doesn't mean that you have to put on as much weight as I did. It doesn't mean that you should or it's the right way to do things. This is just how I did it. Whether it be on purpose or on accident, the muscle was definitely on purpose. The fat, well, it is what it is, you know? Do better next time, right? So anyway, I have decided that, okay, I've gotten myself this far. I told myself last prep, I, at the end of prep, y'all, 
oh my God, I don't really think, I don't really think anyone knows, except for my husband, how done I was. I was fried and <clears throat> I don't think it's that I burned myself out physically so much as I burned myself out mentally because I was like, I know what to do. I can do this. I can do it myself. I'm going to do this myself. You watch. I'm going to show everybody I can do this. And I did it, but at what cost? And I really feel like being as burnt out as I was had everything to do with the rapid weight gain that, or just being t done is what caused me to gain more weight than what I wanted to gain. So, and I told myself, as I was saying in my last prep, that it's like, I will never <laughs> do this again to myself. Yes, I have the know-how, but I don't want to. I don't, when it comes to myself, it is, you have to really step outside of yourself and look at yourself as though you're someone else. That's really, I did it. And that's really hard to do and it can become very taxing because you have the stress of being the coach and showcasing your skills as a coach, but also the stress as the athlete and showcasing yourself as the athlete that has the ability to execute. Wearing both of those hats is just like, like, <laughs> so I told myself I wasn't gonna do that again. And I was going to start the prep, lose about 10 to 15 pounds and then look for a coach but I keep psyching myself out with, okay, let's be aggressive. I'm just finding myself like way more than last time. Finding myself really second guessing my decisions. I'm terrified of losing the new muscle that I've built because it's it is new muscle. There's new a lot of new tissue here. I am 10 pounds. No, the first, the pictures you saw side by side, I'm 10 pounds heavier now roughly than I was then. And I've put on a substantial amount of muscle in my upper body. If I had to guess, I would guess probably around five to seven pounds of that being muscle for in the last two years. I think that that is very generous. I don't, I think that some of that is fat, but I think once I, I'm going to do another side by side when I get down to that, like when 10 pounds from now, when I'm around that same weight, I'm going to do another side by side just to show you that I have in fact put on muscle and I do not under any circumstance want to lose the new tissue that I have put on. So. I am going to hire a coach. I am in the process. I have been in the process for about a week now with hiring my first choice. My first choice is probably the best team, in my opinion, for natural bodybuilding. And that is uh, 3DMJ. So I, I want to hire 3DMJ to take care of, of my contest prep because they, first of all, every single person on that team, there's not one single person on that team that I know, I feel like I know more than. There's not one single person on that team who's bro. They're all evidence-based. They all have experience with competing years and years. These folks were competing when I was on the bodybuilding.com message boards. These are the same people who taught me the basics of who even introduced me to bodybuilding and taught me the basics. So it's basically I'm hiring my teachers 
and I've sent off my with with three DMJs. It's a process. Like you don't just be like, oh, here's my money, coach me. That's not how they work. First, you have to. They want you to read over their mission statement, what they're about, and to understand what it is that you're getting yourself into, you have to pledge to be a 100% uh, natural bodybuilder. They do not prep anybody outside of natural bodybuilders. And then you have to say, yes, I agree to this, and email them back, letting them know that you agree and that you would like to go ahead with the application process. And then you fill out the application, which takes a while if you fill it out. Like if you give them all of the information that they're asking for and you've done a show before, it's going to take you a little while because they, they ask a lot of questions. And I love that. I love it. That's the way it should be. And that matter of fact, that picture that I posted yesterday, which I made the side by side of the is one of the pictures I had to send to them because they wanted a front shot a back shot and photo a photo from your last show. So I sent all that to them and then I got an email back this morning saying that my application had been forwarded to the coaching team and a coach would be in touch with me shortly. I imagine before they put me on the roster, I will probably have to do a Skype call. I'm not 100% sure on that, but all I'm saying is hiring this team is a process because they are freaking amazing. And I don't, I would be fortunate to have any coach on that team, any coach whatsoever. But I feel like I resonate best with, of course, Alberto Nunez because he's awesome. Like, who doesn't think Alberto Nunez is awesome? Have you seen him? If not, you need to go see his, uh, I think it's like Nunez 3DMJ or just type in Alberto Nunez. Go to his Instagram. Peeled. Peeled. Like, holy shit. He, he is amazing. But I really love his attitude. I love his vibe. Like, he's just good, genuine people. And... The other one I resonate really well with is Jeff Alberts, who is the godfather. He's the founder of 3DMJ, and the reason why I resonate with him so well is because he also has a tendency to struggle with his weight in his off season. So I feel like either I feel like those two would be the best fit for me, but at the same time, like I would take freaking Brad Loomis or Eric Helms is my coach any day of the week. Like I'm happy with, like I said, happy with any, anyone that I get, but I will let y'all know who my assigned coach is and we'll see what happens. Anyway, so I'm really excited. That's assuming that they even put me on the roster and that they accept me onto their team because it's a two way street. Like they may, you know, not, Feel like I'm a good fit for them. I that would hurt that would hurt my heart so much. I'll be so sad. But I do have contingencies. Excuse me, and that's what I want to talk about. Not that I just feel like hiring a team and paying the amount that they charge. You get one coach. You check in with one coach. They they do your coaching or your coaching. They do your check-ins weekly for contest prep your nutrition, your training, um, your posing, your like coaching cues with your lifts. Like you send them videos of your lifts and they check your technique and your form. And I just, I feel like there's, they, there's so much value in that team. And that's the reason why I am, that's my first pick. My second pick uh, is actually uh, Paul Revelia, even though he coaches primarily IFBB, NPC, bikini girls. But again, Paul, that's another name. He was another one on the bodybuilding.com forums and he has an amazing physique. He is also 100% natural athlete. And I don't really care if a coach coaches enhanced athletes. I would just 
I prefer a coach that is natural themselves. Hear me out. I don't care if people do performance enhancing drugs. I don't care. Some of the greatest people I know do. But it is important to me because I did have a coach and I don't know. This is pure speculation on, on my part. So I ended up having to stop with that coach for financial reasons. I was It was back when I was going through a bunch of crap. So, but I had to stop with that coach, but I'm kind of glad that that happened because primarily most of his girls were IFBB bikini and figure girls and he literally beat the shit out of me. Not literally. When it came to my workouts, like I enjoyed it though because it was, it was a lot of fun. However, it was more than I was capable of recovering from. And so when he would ask, oh, how are you feeling? And I would be like sore. He's like, really? I must, I need to up your macros. Well, no, I don't really think that's what it was. It's just that I'm not, <laughs> I'm not taking shit to help me recover faster. You know, I'm not a weenie. I'm just, I, I can only recover so fast as a natural. So that is the only reason why I want to go with coach that either a only coaches natural athletes or is a natural athlete themselves because I need them to respect that I am going to go through hormonal fluctuations. I am going to build muscle a lot slower. I am going to recover a lot slower because I am not enhanced. So that's just reality. That's not opinion. That's fact. So, yeah, and so that Paul Revelia is my second choice, and if he does not have room nor will accept me on his roster, then, well, I don't know. Not real sure where I, there's some other coaches, but, you know, I'm just funny. I'm just funny about that sort of thing. I, I really have to feel like I know a lot about the person or team or whatever. Their knowledge base, their coaching philosophies, their principles, what they stand for. And reputable. Like, what is your reputation? You know, and, and a big reason, too, why I want to... I'm choosing 3DMJ is because I want to coach physique athletes someday, but I want to have the experience, the knowledge, the know-how. I want to have all of that under my belt before I start taking on people because I want to build that reputation. You know, 3DMJ, they they coached Matt Ogus. They coached um, Jeff Nippard. I'm trying to think. There's obviously way more, but I'm thinking of like big names that you all may be aware of. So now that this is the, the long winded, yeah, I'm at 26 minutes y'all, this is ridiculous. Where I can't give as much, I think if you're going to step on the bodybuilding stage in any capacity, you should have a coach. I did it, I coached myself to my first show and I won my pro card and I came in diced, I came in shredded, I came in ready. But the, the cost, yeah, it was, free for me to prep myself, but the cost to my body, to my mental state, to my relationships, to everything, that is what the cost was. And so for this prep, I think it's just best for me to just hand it over. And this is what I recommend to all of you, hand it over, put it in the hands of someone else who has your best interest in mind, who has a solid reputation, who you have researched and basically cyber stalked for a long time. Like if you're thinking about doing a show ever, start looking at coaches now. So you can see how their athletes perform. Are their athletes happy? Do their athletes stay on their roster? What message are they sending out? Are they, are they a, you know, uh, going to drive you into the ground or are they going to, you know, push when you need to push, pull back when they need to pull back and not ruin your physique, not ruin your metabolism because there is a lot that can go wrong when 
dealing in this sport. So you have to really make an educated decision. Uh, don't just up and hire any old body. Just because somebody stepped on stage, that doesn't mean that they're knowledgeable. Just because someone, oh, and for the love of fucking God, excuse my language, but not really. Just because someone has a pro card and has, even if they have been doing it for a while, does not, I promise you does not mean that they even kind of sort of know what they're talking about. And I damn sure wouldn't listen to anybody when it comes to a contest prep who has never stepped on stage themselves. I do not care how many people you have prepped. I do not care how, I do not care how badass they look. Until you know what it feels like to literally, for it to hurt to sit on your own ass, you can't tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing until you know what it's like to be miserable, <laughs> okay? To have just every muscle in your body just has lines and shreds and you can't tell me nothing. Like, I don't care. You can't tell me anything. Don't tell me to suck it up. Don't tell me to... Uh, one more rep or you can do it. Don't tell me, don't tell me that. I'm not even trying to hear it unless you've done it for yourself. Point blank period. That's how I feel. I have been learning for 10 years on, you know, I've made mistakes and I have, I have royally, like I've, I could, my physique has the potential to be well beyond what it is right now. I know that. And the reason why it's not is because I have been so stubborn, wanting to do it myself, I'll do it on my own, I wanna do it on my own, because it was a learning process for me. Now I'm an OCB pro, I want to go compete in IMBF so I can become a WNBF pro, and I ain't got time to waste. So, that's why I'm hiring a coach, and I don't recommend anybody stepping on stage without hiring a coach, even if you have the know-how to do it, it's hard and you will burn yourself out. If not physically, definitely mentally. And I just don't recommend it.